Hey guys, so we've been talking about simple harmonic motion. We looked in class at how it oscillated like a sine graph, and so we're going to interpret one of those right now. We've got an object that oscillates as shown in the figure below. We're going to answer a bunch of questions. The first question is, what is the maximum displacement? Or in other words, the amplitude. So that's always going to be from the central line. That's our equilibrium. And so we're going to see how far we go from there, which we can see that it goes up to 8 meters. And then down here, it goes down to 8 meters. So therefore, the amplitude is simply 8 meters. No problem. Letter B. How long does it take to complete one cycle? Well, we can see that on the graph as well. You can go from any point on the graph. I'm going to go for the maximum point. And we're just going to go until we get back to that maximum point again. And you can see that that took from 0 to 4 seconds. Now, you could have picked any point on the graph. I could have picked the bottom point, which starts here at 2, and then gone over to 6, and that would also be 4 seconds. All right? If you choose a point somewhere else in the middle of the graph, be careful. You're not just going back to that same level. You need to be back to the same point on the same part of the graph, so where it's going down here. On this one, it's going up, which means I'm going to pass that one and go over to the next one. And so that would be the same four seconds. You can see how each of my blue lines there is exactly the same length. They all represent four seconds. All right. The next thing that it asks is what is the angular frequency? Well, we talked about in class that to get the angular frequency, I needed to multiply two times pi times the frequency. Now, we found the period in step B, right? That was the period up there, which was four seconds. And so I can do that the frequency is equal to one over the period, and that will equal 0 0.25. And so 0 0.25 is my frequency in Hertz. And so now in order to get the angular frequency, then I can just take that number, that 0 0.25, and I'm going to multiply it by 2 pi. And when I do that, I get half pi. If you want to turn that into a decimal, you can. And so I get an angular frequency of 1.57. And the units for this are radians per second. Remember, hertz is per second. Hertz is the same thing as 1 over seconds. And that 2 pi represents the radians of a full cycle or a full circle. And so therefore, when we multiply the radians times the 1 over seconds, we get radians per second. All right. Next, we move on to at what times in the graph is the object at rest? Well, rest means that the velocity is 0. And hopefully you remember that velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. There we go. So the slope needs to be zero. So the velocity will be zero. And when I look at my graph here, there's not a lot of places where the slope is zero. There's a couple of them and we're gonna find them. So the first one is up here at the top, right? A zero slope means horizontal. So up there at the top, it's zero. Down here at the bottom, it's zero, right? Anytime it flattens out, anytime it changes direction, up here it's zero and then down there again it's zero so we actually have four times when the object is at rest so that's at time zero time two seconds times four seconds and six seconds at each of those times we see that the velocity is zero the object is at rest now that should make sense what's happening physically here right starting with the object at up high so maybe this is an object oscillating up and down. So it could be an object on a spring, right? So we got the spring, we've got the object. It's starting up high. This is at time zero. It's starting up high. And then it's dropping as it gets to its equilibrium point, which is going to be our position zero. It's going to be going its fastest. And then it'll go down until it stretches and it'll come to rest again before it starts going back up again. And so when it's at the top and when it's at the bottom, 
those are the points when it comes to rest. Kind of like when we throw a ball up in the air and it goes up, it stops, and then it comes back down. Just for that instant, that fraction of an instant. Not even a, you can't even time it, but that infinitely small point in time, it's not moving. All right, so there we go. At letter E, it says, at what times after time equals zero does the object have maximum speed? Well, if we go back to this idea that velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph, then when the slope is a maximum, it would then have the maximum speed. Now, it says speed because it doesn't want us to worry about the positive and negative of the velocity. Now, you can see that's happening right here. That's when it's the steepest. This is when it's the steepest. This is when it's the steepest. So that's at time one, two, three, four, and five. So at time one, three, and five seconds, that's when it's going the fastest. All right. Now letter F is our first semi-difficult question here where it asks you to ask us to find the equation of the graph. All right, now you may remember that one of the equations in your formula packet is a x equals a cosine 2 pi f t. All right, that's when it's position versus time, simple harmonic motion. Now, 2 pi f, remember, is the angular frequency, all right, which is what we did up here in letter C. And so, therefore, we can find the answer to letter f here by just saying that x equals the amplitude, which was our answer to letter A, 8, cosine, and then 2 pi f t. 2 pi f was 1.57, or if you want to write it as pi over 2, that's fine as well, times t. And there you go. We then have the equation of the graph. Now, the next question, g, is what would the equation of the graph of velocity versus time look like? Well, part of this we can get by analyzing our graph over here, right? We already talked about how it starts at zero speed at the beginning. Here at one second, it has its maximum negative speed. So we'll just put it negative. Don't worry about the numbers on the y-axis yet. Then at two, it's back to zero. At three, it's at its maximum speed there. So we'll go up to the maximum. Four is back to rest. And if we put that together, you can get a graph that looks like this. Now, hopefully you notice that that is a negative sign graph. So for G, we're going to go V equals, it's going to be a negative sign graph. Now, you'll notice that the period of that sign graph is the same, right? It takes it the same amount of time to go from a point to that same exact point again. So inside the sign is still going to be pi over 2 T. So that much we can do without knowing any other mathematics or any other physics. Now, the other part I'm going to go ahead and give you right now is that the amplitude of that velocity graph is going to be your original amplitude multiplied by your angular frequency there. All right. Now, don't worry too much about why that is right now. It's unlikely that you're going to actually, I, I, I haven't ever seen a question in recent years where they've actually asked you to do this. Acceleration is much more likely, but we'll talk about that more when we get into the rotational dynamics in our next unit. So for now, just recognize that this number right here needs to be our original amplitude times the angular frequency, which is pi over 2. So that'll be 8 pi over 2, which is, of course, just 4 pi. And so that'll give us the equation for g. Now, I wouldn't have expected you to be able to do that before, but now we've had a chance to talk through it and you've seen it once, at least the sign and the period, you should be comfortable with doing that. This other part, don't worry about too much, like I say, but you could get it just by multiplying the amplitude by the angular frequency there to get the new amplitude for the velocity. All right, that's it. Hopefully that was helpful. See you in the next vid.